Hi, welcome back to Safety Speaks with Darren and Taryn at the South Carolina Trucking Association. Today we're going to talk about drug and alcohol supervisor training and who's actually subject to that. Darren, mm -hmm. I know you, we've got a lot of questions that come in to us on a weekly yes. basis. and This happens to be one of those topics. Yes, and we actually provide this particular training at least quarterly. We do, um, so around the state. I think the biggest thing is everybody always has supervisory training and they just kind of lose it. Is it just the supervisor? You know, it's anybody who gets a chance to see the drivers to determine whether or not CDL holders uh, that are subject to drug and alcohol, if they are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. But I really want us to just kind of make people aware of who's subject to it and to be aware of these letters or emails that may get sent. If you don't have this training, then you're out of Right, so there are a lot of scare tactics that yes. go on in order to drive business in this in this industry. So mm -hmm. um, if it's not, we're just going to say it, if it's not from FMCSA Correct. or if it's not from SCTA, you should probably just question it. Correct, <laughs> correct. So, so it, it, you know, not to prolong the time, but reasonable suspicion. It is pretty much where you can watch a video or, or where someone facilitating like we do. 60 minutes of drug training, 60 minutes of alcohol training for uh, drivers who may be abusing drugs or alcohol, mm -hmm. for a supervisor or a company-designated person to identify to be able to take this person for that particular reasonable suspicion test. Right, so you're looking for signs and symptoms of drug Correct. and alcohol abuse <clears throat> on the yeah. job. And yes. that could be done by a supervisor, Correct. Uh, a dispatcher, Yes. a um, maintenance supervisor, that's right. a whole host of people. Right, based one on, per shift. Yes, based on their behavior, um, you know, uh, body odor. Um, I guess the biggest thing, a lot of people don't want to do this because you don't want to profile a person, but mm -hmm. it has to be done, especially with the legalization of marijuana in certain states. You got just have to be careful. Um, so just know that if you are a one vehicle operator that is subject to drug and alcohol, you're not subject to reasonable suspicion tests. Don't you can't supervise yourself. Yeah, you can't. You're not going to say, hey, look, I smoked way. a joint today. I'm going to take myself <laughs> down for a test. So just be mindful that, that you know, it is subject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be negative, to be it'd honest. Be but, uh, but, you know, just be aware that it is a requirement if you have, um, you know, more than one uh, driver that is a CDL holder mm -hmm. that's subject to this. And that training is available through the South Carolina Trucking Association. So we just don't want you to be taken advantage of with scare tactics. Right. That is not actually from no uh, regulatory. How many times do you have to take this training? It is one time. That is one and done. One and done. That's it's it. One and done. The current training is good. Refresher is always good, but it's just a one and done. You have a certificate in file, and you're in compliance. Right. Okay. And that way you should be able to properly identify and document and handle the situation. Correct. All right. All right. Thanks, Darren. Thank you, Miss Taryn. We'll see you next time on we'll Safety Speaks. We'll see Speaks. you next time. Have a good evening.